Stunt failed. Megan stepped on a nail by spreading PR news to attend the Taylor Swift concert. So how exactly does going to a Taylor Swift concert align with Megan's interests and her passions? Well, I guess with her supposed attendance at the concert in LA, she was assuming that she would be treated as a VIP and she would automatically get access to Taylor Swift backstage, finally being able to corner Taylor Swift and try to force a friendship upon her. But what about the fact that Megan has used and ghosted and abused and kicked to the curb so many of her friends that she's made over the years? Megan doesn't have any friends right now, and so she's desperate to make some new ones because she needs sick fans to regulate her emotional life, because she is this empty, vapid, no-talent narcissist who cannot do any self-evaluation. She just expects everybody to recognize her as this brilliant, amazing superstar. But unfortunately for Megan, she's not brilliant, she's not amazing, and she's not a superstar. Her toxic reputation certainly precedes her, so she's being shunned, she's being avoided, she's being ignored. And what would she want Taylor Swift for as a friend anyway? Who knows? I can only assume, though, she'd want to borrow her jet, borrow her shoes, copy her clothing, ask Taylor about who does her hair, what kind of eyeliner she uses, and she'd probably try to get herself a job as a backup singer in the band. We don't know exactly what Megan wants with Taylor Swift, but we know it's something because Megan has always got a hidden agenda. Everybody that is in her crosshairs knows that to allow her to get close is the kiss of death, so everybody is avoiding her like the plague. Now apparently Megan did not get VIP seating and she didn't get to meet Taylor Swift after the concert. All that trouble and not a single response. Taylor didn't want to be on her podcast. Now, she has sung with Prince William on stage, though. She prefers a real royal family, not a couple of rejects, and who can blame her? And of course, Megan wants to try to align herself with this superstar because she's worthless. Taylor Swift did not recognize her, did not want to befriend her at the concert. So I wonder if Megan's going to come out with this claim that Taylor is racist. Perhaps Taylor could recommend a good fashion advisor for Megan, somebody who could tell her how to dress for the occasion, how to choose clothing that fits her, and that certain unflattering parts simply shouldn't have all that attention drawn to them. Looks like Meghan Markle couldn't even manage the transition from being a working royal to being this desperate hanger-on duchess and unemployed actress in Hollywood. Sad that she can't even get that right. The auditions as a cheap duchess with bought and paid for awards and word salad speeches have not gone down very well. Meghan Markle wanted to be the most famous person in the world. Well, it turns out she's a big dud. Meghan Markle is like some fake jewelry from the dollar store. Maybe she looks all bright and sparkly at first, but pretty quickly you see her for what she really is. And now she is ending up jobless and she's this rejected pain in the ass hustler. Is the script not supposed to be first we take Manhattan, then we take Berlin? Meghan Markle keeps on trying and she keeps on trying in different places, but she keeps on coming up empty because it doesn't really matter where she goes. We already know what she's all about. If she still hasn't made it in Hollywood, then how could she possibly try to transition into politics? Meghan Markle wouldn't last a minute in the political snake pit. She has committed career suicide so many times now. People are simply not buying this Madame Butterfly effect at this point. They're tired of her. They're tired of her whining. They're tired of her one-trick pony of falling on her dagger, only to get up again for one more climactic operatic death scene. We're sick and tired of this show. It's gotten boring. We wish that she would just disappear already so we could finally go home. In other news, the royal family's official website has undergone a bit of a makeover, and Meghan Markle has been singled out for some pretty unusual treatment. Meghan's entry has been strangely altered, and also it's been altered to reflect the fact that she and Harry are not allowed to use HRH styling anymore. It's about time. And this week, the royal family basically delivered a whole new snub to Meghan through the edit button. Buckingham Palace's webmaster finally got around to doing their job and properly refreshing the firm's online presence. There have been quite a few changes over the past several years, so it's good that they finally updated it. Now, many people are focusing on the fact that the revamp side has seen Meghan and Harry Stylings as his and her royal highness go out the window. Of course, this is happening three and a half years after her late majesty made that decision. But anyway, I guess better late than never. But you can find a much more interesting story in the part that goes into detail about each working and ex-working member of the royal family. I mean, it's just as boring as you would imagine. Every person's entry enthusiastically enumerating said Windsor's particular areas of charitable interests and just how hard they work on behalf of the crown. 
That is until you get to Megan's page. Okay, so at first glance, the whole entry seems to be six sentences long, and it's pretty lacking in warmth. It's incredibly noticeable, actually. Accessing the pages of all the other members of the family means being from the get-go swamped in details about how charitable they are. But Megan's entry necessitates somebody having the patience to do a bit of clicking to discover what she really achieved during her brief official tenure. Unlike all the other entries, Megan's page requires a user to manually click through the charitable work section to actually read in any detail whatsoever about what she did. Interestingly enough, Megan's page on the royal website, thanks to the magic of internet archives, shows that this wasn't the case as recently as June. At that point, her inclusion followed the same format and structure as all the other HRHs. So all right, maybe we could try to be generous and see this change to Megan's inclusion as nothing more than a stuff up, considering that the site contains more than 5,000 pages, and it seems like the king is not very interested in this whole internet thing. It's also worth mentioning that on the royal family page on the website, Harry and Meghan now feature under the late queen's cousins, the Duke of Gloucester, 31st in the line to the throne, and Princess Alexandra, 57th in line to the throne, both of whom still undertake occasional official royal duties. Well, all right, it's almost a year since Meghan last stepped foot in the UK, a full 12 months in which she and Harry released a six-part TV series that accused Prince William of leaving Harry feeling terrified after he supposedly screamed and shouted at him, of the royal family suffering from, quote, a huge level of unconscious bias, and that Buckingham Palace supposedly conducted a real kind of war against Meghan. And this brings us to another pretty confusing detail on the reworked royal website. Both of Meghan and Harry's pages include a line that is taken from the Instagram post that they released on January 8th of 2020, announcing that they would walk away from their royal duties in what later became known as Megxit. Specifically, even now in 2023, quote, they are balancing their time between the United Kingdom and North America, continuing to honor their duty to the monarch, the commonwealth, and their patronages. Seriously? Well, anybody who can count to a first-class level can figure out that they are not balancing their time between California and Britain. I mean, come on. They've only spent about a month in total back in Britain in the last 35 months or so. But the most confusing thing in all this is the idea that Meghan and Harry may be in any way continuing to honor their duty to the monarch. And what kind of crazy universe is going on TV to portray royal life as some type of living hell, the palace is basically a snake pen of egos, and the king is a bit of a useless father who couldn't even help his son and daughter-in-law translate to honoring their duty to the monarch? I mean, after all, Harry and Meghan's very public attacks against the royal paradigm over the last few years is unprecedented. Whether or not it was intentional, Meghan and Harry have done so much damage to the reputation of the monarchy as a whole. And I think the worst part of all this is that instances such as this, Meghan website reworking, simply adds weight to Meghan and Harry's overarching arguments about the firm. Whether the situation was intentional or somebody just messed up, the end result is the same. It really does look like the palace is trying to dismiss or downplay her royal work. And you, do you agree with me? If yes, don't be afraid to like and share my video with anybody who would enjoy it. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in, have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.